Hey guys, it's Comp Kali Sushi. We are back at Six Flags Great Adventure for Fright Fest. This is the first time I am here with every maze officially open to the public. It is Friday, October 4th, and look how crowded it is gonna be. That is the line for security. I don't know how much we're gonna be getting on. I do wanna at least get on Texas Chainsaw Massacre because I have not done that one yet. That's the only Fright Fest maze I have left to do, but uh, we'll see how it goes. And you can see the chaperone policy in action right now. They are checking people's IDs as you're going in. So now this is the Fright Fest I know. It is only 5.42 and they are already letting in Diamond, VIP, all that. The whole VIP line with Diamond members and all that. Alrighty, we're inside. You can see the mass group of people coming in. They opened every line early. You can also see right there, it says, do not climb on the planter. I guess people started doing that already. But we're gonna go straight into Six Flags Universe to get our Haunted Maze Pass, which you can see, probably the best place to do it if you're coming on a night like this where Fright Fest starts right away. You can also see over there at that side of the entrance, more has been painted with red and that nice uh, roof color as well. All right, we made it through and um, Six Flags Universe was not open right away. They had like a group of employees right out front of Main Street Market scanning passes and giving out wristbands, which I imagine is probably how it is uh, initially at the start of Fright Fest. But if you get in quick, go to a maze that you really want to do that'll probably have a long line later because it's pretty dead right now because everyone's still getting their maze passes. And for those of you wondering about bricks, there are some new bricks in here. I'm curious if my second brick is here yet. Um, I'm not seeing it. I almost forgot what I put on it at this point because it was quite a while ago. Um, no, I do not see it, but if you see yours, let me know down in the comments. And there's two things you can see up ahead. For one, on the directional board for Fright Fest Extreme, the coming soon signs are gone because they're all open now. And up ahead, they have new signs up for Trick or Treat and Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I really, really like that sign. It looks awesome. What we're gonna do since we're right here is go through Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is the final maze I have yet to go through. Really cool to be walking through Ballin's Jungle Land, which is a very rare thing you get to do. You got this little water tower here, stuff over there. And the whole queue for this just kind of winds through all of the old ball and jungle land. I would really love to see this whole area redeveloped or reused or something because there's so much space over here for flat rides, maybe even a coaster, honestly. Just so much space to work with. So hopefully one day we will see this space utilized. And this is up here is where the Splashwater Oasis attraction was. And it's gone now. They tore it down earlier this year. And right up here is where you enter Texas Chainsaw Massacre. All right, so just got out of Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I want to go through it again later because I think I timed this wrong and went in there way too early because there was pretty much no actors in there. I don't think they all got here yet for their shift since it is like right at six. So we're gonna go on Ka probably and try that again later. But the sets were really, really cool. It felt longer than Stranger Things even though it had the same building type. So I'm not sure um, why I thought that. Maybe I guess they used the space a little differently. The Stranger Things rooms were a little bigger anyway, but now it is time for the king of all coasters. Just did two rides on Cobb while there's no line, and now we're gonna go over to Toro. And I wound up deciding against riding Toro, just don't really feel like it. So we're gonna eat and then do some mazes. It looks like they have themed the uh, Macho Nacho Bar to Day of the Dead with all these awesome decorations. These are some of the alcoholic beverage items you can find at the bars. This one particularly over here at the Macho Nacho one. They have those specialty Fright Fest Extreme cocktails with pretty unique themes for all the different mazes and shows they have here. And I gotta say, I really like the addition of all these flowers throughout uh, Plaza del Carnival. It looks awesome. The line is still very minimal over here at Big Top Terror. It looks like Express actually has a much longer line than Standby. And now it is time for Saw and Asylum, which I'm really excited to do Saw again because I want to try the other path because there is a split path in there, which is really cool. There you go. Even over here at Saw, the line is still fairly minimal actually. Advertising. All right, we just got out of Saw and then Asylum. Both really good. I definitely still think Asylum is the best, but 
Saw was really good nonetheless. I am noticing that there's not as many scare actors as I'm used to for whatever reason. I don't know if maybe we're just hitting these a little too early or whatever it is, but they're still really good. Something I wish the groupers would tell the guests is to not stop as you're going through the maze because a lot of people seem to think it's okay to just stop in the middle of a walkthrough attraction and then it winds up destroying all of the groupers' efforts to space people out. So if you are going to haunts, do not stop. You're not supposed to stop in the middle of a haunt. You're supposed to keep walking. But I digress, Ace. How was Saw and Asylum? Saw was one. Saw was better, especially. This you like Saw year. better? Yeah, than last year. Well, I'm, I'm, I so thought you meant better than. Good too. Okay. So they were both good. I did notice with the scare actors. I was here last night as well. There was actually more scare actors last night in some of the mazes versus tonight. It was kind of weird. Like wouldn't instance, expect that kind of split. No, you wouldn't expect that. Like for instance, Texas Chainsaw Massacre had a lot more people in it as opposed to our first run through tonight, which was early. So, maybe they're on break. J Brian? Yeah, those mazes were excellent. I didn't expect, I, I wasn't expecting, like, know what it was, and then it was pretty cool. And For sure. Good. And John? It, it were both good. Um, I, I'm mulling between which is better, IP or, or generic. They, that one is probably But there's bad. a big difference between the two, between yeah. IP and between Great Adventure right. done specific ones, which is a really cool difference. Um, I definitely am leaning more towards the Great Adventure originals. I think the IPs rely a lot on strobes and like the program scares, which is definitely an interesting route to go. But now we are going to go over to Stranger Things, which is the first time I'm going through it while it's open to the public. It just opened yesterday along with Trick or Treat and um, there is one more, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So I've officially done all the mazes and that's, like I said, in previous vlogs, Reaper's Closet right here, you can get your maze pass and that is also where you're going to find all the Stranger Things merch. Looks like Stranger Things is very popular as I predicted at the start of the year when they first announced it. Um, so let's go do it. Alrighty, we just did Stranger Things. That was my first time doing it in a while because the last time I did it was Media Night. Ace, what did you think of it? it? It was really good. Only thing I wish was a little longer. It is very, very short. That is for sure, John. I was, it was good. I mean, for somebody that hasn't watched it, I mean, it's pretty good. Uh, it's short. I wish it was a little bit long, or longer, though. Yep. Brian, you have seen the show, right? Yeah, the show is good, and it like pretty much relates to the show. I mean, either whether it's short or long, it's good for what it is, and I enjoyed it. That I've been through this a couple times already, and every time I walk through, I notice some more details. Very accurate to the show. Very good. 100%. That is probably the coolest thing about this. If you have seen the show, you're going to love it because there's so many callbacks and tie-ins to the show, which I still think is the coolest thing about it. But if you're looking for something scary, this probably is not going to do it. It's, like I said in the Media Day vlog, if you guys saw that, is much more so a cinematic walkthrough as opposed to a scare maze. I feel like a lot of the IPs kind of go down that route where they're more so about the sets and how cool the sets look. Uh, what was really cool was that the animatronics in this one were actually working because on media day, the, well, I don't want to spoil it, but there are a couple of animatronics in there that are major characters in the Stranger Things show and they weren't on, but now they are and they look awesome. I love seeing them in action. So hopefully you guys can get over to Fry Fest soon and try it out. Like I said, this is really gonna be a cool maze for you if you've seen the show and you're a big fan of it. If you haven't seen the show, you're probably not gonna to care too much for it. And that's just based off the fact that it's very lore heavy and focused on the show itself. And I also should mention the issue of people stopping in the middle of the trail continued in Stranger Things, unfortunately. I, I really wish they would uh, announce it prior to the trail so anyone from the park is watching. It'd be great if that could be enforced because you are supposed to stick with your group you're not supposed to merge groups and stop and mess up the whole flow because it just winds up ruining for the people behind. And of course, it's not the park's fault. It's just people that decide to stop and look at it, which I get it. You want to look at the props. It's a lot of really cool stuff, but you can't stop, inconvenience others. You got to keep moving. And right here, kind of by the annex where you go from Nitro or Batman, you can see the interactive bubble wand spot here. There's a couple of these throughout the park where you can buy one of the bubble wands and they will do something. I don't have one, so I don't know what this one does, but you tap it there, kind of like how Wizarding World of Harry Potter works at Universal. And I guess there's some kind of reactive element over here somewhere that triggers when you do that, which is pretty cool. Just now noticing there's a mock multi-launch coaster or just a mock extreme coaster in general in the window over here, fill the thrill, so hey. Maybe, or not fill the thrill, quick six. Maybe this is uh, foreshadowing of our next coaster, I don't know. Even Reflections doesn't have that bad of a line. 
So you can see Giant Wheel is back open. The lights are not on quite yet. They still need to be programmed, but they are physically there. They're just not ready to be operated yet. I'd imagine maybe next weekend, weekend after they will be on, which is gonna make this whole midway here in front of Skyscreamer look awesome, especially with Flash now. I imagine some of the lights will even bounce off of it and maybe we'll see it testing soon too because the train is now in the station. Yeah, it's gonna be a busy night. There are people just funneling on in here. For those of you looking for prizes that are actually related to the IPs the park has, this one right here, this colors game, has a lot of really cool prizes actually. Some Harley Quinn, Joker, Batman, Pennywise potentially. Lots of cool prizes over there. Now it is time for Army of the Dead. For whatever reason, there is no line for Army of the Dead. But we did go through, and I'm very quickly coming to the conclusion that when we went through on media night, I do not think we went the right way because that layout was completely different than the way I walked through it on media night. That was actually a lot longer. It was better. I honestly think that's probably one of my upper ranked uh, IP mazes. That one's really, really good. I love the sets. And shout out to the guy in there who yelled Hollywood or uh, whatever you said. I heard Hollywood. I know that. So I appreciate the shout out. Ace, how was Army of the Dead? It was good, but... Last week seemed like it was a little better. Dad, how was this round through Army of the Dead? It's crazy because like I've been through these mazes a couple of times each already, and pretty much every time it's different, which is kind of strange. Very true. You know? John, or Brian, sorry. It's very dark out. How was Army of the Dead? Oh, Army of the Dead was pretty cool. That was a pretty unique maze. I, I didn't know what to expect. And John, you saw the movie. I did not. Yeah. What did you think of it, knowing it was, that? It was pretty good. It was like the movie, you know, in certain ways. I mean, it, you know, movies versus uh, mazes are different, but right. yeah, it was good though. Yeah. Also, good news, Superman is in fact back open. You can see it running. And now it is time for Conjuring. My first time through it with actual actors. Conjuring, for whatever reason though, does seem to have a bit of a line. Even the army did not. Alrighty, we just got out of Conjuring. It was really cool to finally go through it with scare actors. That was definitely a nice, uh, different experience than what I got on media day when there were no scare actors. It was actually really good. I still have to think about how I would rank all these uh, mazes because I do want to put together a definitive ranking. That one's definitely in the upper half though. Ace, how was Conjuring? It was good, but different from last week. Different? It seems like they're always different. I know. Dad, how was Conjuring? Conjuring is cool. There's one person in there that I've been through it twice. I thought they were a guest, but they're not. Yes, I know exactly <laughs> who you're talking pretty, about. pretty funny, actually. It John? Was, okay, it was good. Hey, um, I thought, you know, so far out of all the mazes, it's kind of middle of the pack. It's good for what it is. Brian? Yeah, it was pretty cool, The Conjuring. I, it, it was a pretty awesome maze, and I would go through it again, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Definitely. And now, because it's been closed for so long, we're going to go for a ride on Superman. You see the line for Superman? Honestly, it's not that bad. I mean, the first queue house is almost completely full, but, oh, they're on, are they on one train? I think they might be on one train. That would be why. But um, yeah, it's great to have this ride back open. It's been closed for a while. It was up and down a little bit, but they got it open yesterday. I hope it stays open for us to go on because I do see maintenance up there. But uh, it is great to have this back because a lot of the general public absolutely love this ride and they take away lines from the other rides to go on this one, which I always appreciate. So we just got off of Superman in the back and I did not think we were gonna be getting off as quickly as we did because we came pretty close to an evac. We were stopped on the lift for probably like 30, 40 seconds and the way it stopped, it sounded like it probably went down. It did not, thankfully, I guess. I would have liked to have gotten an evac, but the ride was good. I know you guys that watch the channel a lot know I don't like this ride. That was actually a really good ride. It was very smooth. Um, the pretzel loop is unbelievable. The turns are stupid, but you guys already know that ace. How was Superman? Hey, you know you love the back row. It and was a really good I have to quote ride. Ace because when we got to the station, he said <laughs> the pretzel loop makes him feels like feel like Professor Charles Xavier. Like yes. But it was a good, it was a great, great night ride. 
I agree. It's always fun at night, Dad. That pretzel loop is just so freaking intense. If the whole ride was like that, yeah. I would love this ride, but yeah. it's not. Uh, it doesn't mean it's not a good ride. It's just not my type of ride. But it is back open for all of you who love Superman. I know there's a lot of you, so go enjoy it. All right, we're going to do round two through Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Hopefully there's a few more actors than there was earlier. All right, we just did Texas Chainsaw Massacre again, this time at night. So the first scene was better because that one's like partially outdoor. Um, I don't really know where to rank this one because it's, it's a really strange one because it's themed after chainsaws. And there are chainsaws in it, but they're never on. It's always an audio recording because obviously you can't use a chainsaw inside. So... I don't really know how to feel about it. There was definitely more actors than before, which was nice. Um, but it was an interesting one. I already asked my dad, Ace, what did you think you of Texas Chainsaw? just hit the nail right on the head. Stole the words out of my mouth. Interesting. Well, now we're doing the most interesting of them all, which yeah. is Trick or Treat, your final one to do because you've never done it before. Mm -hmm. This, I mean, from my immediate day experience, was probably my favorite IP. We'll see if it winds up holding up. So Great. see you guys over there. <laughs> Alrighty, Trick or Treat is done, and I still think that might be my favorite IP maze. I just think it's the most true to the lore of the franchise. It's not the longest, but it's really well done. All the scenes are really cool. I think it uses that, like, kind of time scare strobe thing that they've been going for the best out of all the IP mazes. Ace, there's your final maze. What did you think of Trick or Treat? I was impressed. There are more scare actors than the other ones. Yes, there was, like, seven different Sams. Was it was unbelievable. That... There's quite a few Sams in there. It's good. I liked it. I don't know if it's my favorite IP, but I gotta, it's, I gotta, it's gotta think, about it, think about it. I gotta think about it myself. Um, now Ace insists that we go back on Toro, so let's go see if that's gonna happen. Toro has quite the lines. The whole first queue house is completely full. We just got off of Toro and shout out to the crew. They are churning through trains. So this line is dying down super fast and it was running fantastic as usual. Shout out to the crew, especially Casey. You guys are doing an excellent job. And considering this is Fright Fest and the line is moving as fast as it is, absolutely great job. ride on Medusa. It took a while though because people kept getting sick so they kept having to send out the trains empty but it was good and shout out to the scare actor in Bone Butcher Territory who just came up out of nowhere and went Hollywood. I uh, greatly appreciate the scare there but uh, now we're gonna go for a night ride on Log Flume. <laughs> Just did log flume, I got a lot more wet than I really wanted to, so now I gotta go buy a hoodie because that may be kind of cold out here, I'm not gonna lie. Oh my Wound up buying myself this trick or treat uh, hoodie. They have a lot of really good Fright Fest merch this year, especially with all the IPs. I'm probably gonna wind up getting Stranger Things merch at some point too, but don't sleep on the merch. Well, everyone knows the Fright Fest hoodies always sell like crazy, but uh. They have some other designs that aren't just the generic ones, so go check them out on your next visit. So that is gonna end out our night here at Great Adventure Fright Fest, finally got maze completion by going through Texas Chainsaw. We did every maze except for Big Top and Witch's Reflections because I've already done both of those a bunch of times since they were the only ones open for a while. But Fright Fest is great. Highly recommend coming to check it out. It is nice to see the park finally busy again. It hasn't been busy like this pretty much all year, at least in my visits. So seeing it like this definitely brings a lot of life in. Ace, how was your time at Fright Fest? Maze completion. That was the main objective. Absolutely. And I got rides in, which is great. And Chris, you've been all over the place tonight, but Amazing. we came in with you and we're leaving with you. So how was your day? It was the best. I got 16 rides on King Dakar. Car. I was hoping for 50, but gotta be realistic. <laughs> that wasn't gonna happen. Not on a night like tonight. Great night though, awesome night. Absolutely, and Dad? I had a great night. 
I was here last night, so I got on all the mazes. So I got on all the mazes again tonight. Got a lot of great rides. Had a lot of fun tonight. Absolutely. With all that being said, guys, that's going to do it for today's video from Six Flags Great Adventures Fright Fest. If you enjoyed, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye, guys.